Good morning, I'm Julia and welcome to my garden. It is, this is where I try and remember, Monday the 24th of June, I think. It's a bit cooler today, a bit misty up on the hills, um, but because it's a little bit damper, it's a good day to sow a few of these little globe carrots. What are they called? Paris Market 5 Atlas. I'm also going to sow, yes I am, <laughs> rainbow beetroot selections. So they came free out of magazine. So we'll see how they go. These ones are Thompson and Morgan, the beetroot. And for the carrots, again, I th yeah, free on a magazine, uh, Kitchen Garden. Uh, uh, they're from King Seeds. So I'm going to get those out into the garden. I am also going to... <sighs> I can see little slug trails on some of the pots and planters and bags that are in the greenhouse. So I have purchased wool pellets. I'm going to stick a few of those on, make sure they're damp, because then they'll swell up, apparently. And hopefully that will help to deter the slugs. Hopefully I'll find the flaming things. And we'll get rid of them in my own inimitable style. So that's the first job I'm going to do. I'm going to do the wool pellets. And I'm going to put some outside as well because I'm getting a bit of slug damage on me, butternut squashes, and I'd like to stop that before they decimate a lot of them. I've not got many out as it is. I'd rather not lose them. So, shall we uh, deal with slugs together? Okay, I'm not sure if you'll be able to pick it up, but this. Yeah, I think you can just about see. It's one of the bags that has got a bit of slug trailing going on. So around that melon that's in the back corner of it, it's chosen to go down that way behind the cucumber. Uh, we're going to put some of these wool pellets. See if we can't deter this critter from nabbing my melon. <laughs> Hairy pony nuggets. a few others because a few of them are with me. Pots have got the same issue. Protect the cukes. Cucumbers have suddenly become extremely important <laughs> to me. It's hard to know how much to put down without having done it before. Can you see down behind there? That is a healthy looking melon. <laughs> Thank heavens one of them is. Because a lot of them seem to be succumbing because I didn't know that they don't really like being transplanted. So I have a plan for next year. Not to worry. Let's try and get some pellets in there as well. Just going to move you. My first cucumber is ready now to harvest. Ooh, <laughs> might give it another day or two. You can definitely tell that those wool pellets are definitely from sheep. They stink. 
However, hopefully they'll do the trick. I've not put very much water on them at the moment. The soil around them is quite moist because they only got watered, everything only got watered yesterday. I don't want to cause any damping off by getting water too close to the leaves of anything or the stems of anything. I'm just going to leave it as it is at the moment and see if it plumps up enough. And if it doesn't, I might just use like uh, a drinks bottle with some holes poked in the screw cap and then I can be very specific about where the water is going. There's the dog wanting to come in. Don't you? You've got plants everywhere and a big bushy tail. Stay there. <laughs> You're the good boy. You're my man. What's going on in here? Every time you come in here, something goes clattering over. Because that big waggy tail. You stay there, I'll be coming out in a second. I will. I'm not sure that he believes me. I will. I promise. <laughs> He's a good dog. Stay there. Definitely not sure that he believes me. Ah, ah. No. Dirty water. Don't drink that. You've got the clean water in the house. <laughs> You're clever. You're clever. Ain't you? Yes, you are. You're my clever boy. <laughs> Alrighty, we better get some work done. Can't play with dog all day, can I? Right, what shall I do next then? Done wool pellets in here. I'm going to do wool pellets outside. It might rain today, so I might not need to water them. They might water themselves. Um, and if they don't, I can water them. Oh, I can see the most enormous slug on my potatoes. and That thing is going back in a minute. No more slug. Although there's probably about 20 in there somewhere. <laughs> I have just been removing the straw from this bed slowly and carefully. I have decided it ain't a good idea. I think it harbours slugs which are bad enough at this time, at the moment, here anyway. And we don't really live in a climate that needs us. This year, anyway. Oh, there's another one. You can see from that waltham butternut squash there that the blighters have had at it. I'd definitely rather have to weed than deal with slugs hiding under straw. Alright. I think it looks nicer anywhere, doesn't it? Yes. I'm going to try and remove a bit more of the straw that's around individual plants. Okay, I'm going to carry on and do the rest of this bed. There's quite a few to do. So, I'll be back when it's done. Well, that is all the plants. I've now got some wool pellets around them. So the next bit is water them. 
anybody watching me doing this will think I'm mad for turning on the video like today. It's for the pets. And I was definitely right about the slug harbouring thing. I've just removed so many slugs from this bed. Sweet corn's going on nicely, the swift and the golden bantam. Both doing really well now. Looking healthy. Thing. They are swelling up. Even swelling as I do this job. I'll show you in a minute the difference. Mm. These are the pellets before um, wetting them, and this is what is already happening once you wet them, they're already swelling up. Oh, quite good. I have hopes. I'm going to sow these carrots in this bed here in front of these lettuces. I'm going to, I've already removed all the pak choy and fed it to the chickens, all apart from one that hasn't gone to seed yet. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, carrots first up. I'm going to remove all this straw. Okay, I'll give those a little watering in and that will be those sown and then I'm going to do the beetroot on the other side in front of the beans which are now climbing very nicely. Raw. Well, I've interrupted proceedings partly because it started to rain although I did manage to get those beetroots in. There weren't very many seeds in that packet. Let's have a look, see what it tells us. 30 seeds apparently. It's not a lot, is it? They're all out. So they've all been planted in one drill in front of those um, climbing French beans. But exciting news. I've just had the postman deliver a parcel from the Real Seed Company. You know when you're in two minds about doing something? I've got Gigante's beans. But they're not sown yet and it's so, so late, so delicate. 
I could sew them in here. I've got space for a bag at the back there. I could just do, and I've got space for a bag at the back here. <laughs> I've also got, Vivi has been going on about these and the story behind them and it's a tearjerker. So you all probably already know exactly what these seeds are. How could you not, how could I resist? Cherokee, Cherokee, Trail of Tears. You can see that. I like these paper packets. They're much nicer than the plastic poachy things. Having said that, I did also get these for next year. Burgess Buttercup squash vining type <laughs> again you know what's going through my mind don't you keep them in the greenhouse and grow them up in here is it getting warm enough in here it's not warm enough in here for these to germinate in here I'd have to get the heat map back out again I could I wonder if that's been the problem with my squashes not been warm enough for them Solve it. Solve it. About three weeks later than I should be. Well, thank you for watching today. Um, hope you found it interesting. It was just a little bit of a meander. I'm going to give you regular reports on how those um, wool pellets do. I did plant those carrots and I did plant those beetroots. So that's two jobs for today ticked off. I've not planted up these tomato suckers yet, but I will do. I'm going to go inside and find the other shopping bags and bring them out. However, they might have something else in them. And I might be looking for bigger pots to just pop these into now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. There is some fun to be had by just experimenting, isn't there? And if I grow these things in the greenhouse, it might give them a bit more time. By the way, I picked one of the pods from one of the um, peas. Not the Oregon sugar pod. Not Azita's. Azita's. The one before them. Douce de Provence. I picked one of the Douce de Provence pods of peas today. They were ultra tiny, very young, but oh, do you know what? I've never believed that thing about how sweet peas are when you take them from the pod in the garden because I've tried them before and I wasn't that impressed. Love peas, but eating them raw straight from the pod, that didn't do it for me, but that did. Douce de Provence, oh, they're sweet. Mmm, mmm, it's giving me a taste now. I can't wait for the others to grow, to pods to be big enough. I don't know what made me pick that pod. I think I thought it was fuller than it was. Be out in the rain, I need to go home for a little bit. Right, time for a cup of tea and a